Hi, welcome to why the binomial distribution is important. What do flipping a coin, the number of left-handed people in a classroom, and the number of red cars in a parking lot have in common? They all can be described by the binomial distribution. In this video, we'll talk about the binomial distribution and why it's important. We'll discuss the conditions under which it arises and give some examples of phenomena described by the binomial distribution. Let's imagine we have a situation where we conduct n identical trials of some experiment. The trials are independent, so the outcome of a trial does not affect the outcomes of other trials. Each trial will have one of two possible outcomes. Outcome 1 has a probability p, and outcome 2 has a probability of 1 minus p. Sometimes 1 minus p is called q. The binomial distribution tells us the probability for outcome 1 to occur in exactly m out of the n trials. A typical example is flipping a possibly unfair coin, which has a probability p of coming up heads and a probability 1 minus p of coming up tails. And we should note that on this channel, we sometimes refer to the probabilities to come up heads and tails as pH and pt. So in this case, the binomial distribution gives us the probability that the n flips of the coin will yield m heads and n minus m tails. So the binomial distribution looks like this. We call it capital P of M, given P and N. So the binomial distribution takes two parameters. The first one is the probability of outcome 1, which is what we call little p, and the number of trials, which is what we call N. And it gives the probability of outcome 1 occurring exactly M times, where M is less than or equal to N. A derivation of this result can be found in the video The Binomial Distribution, available on this channel. For the purposes of this channel, we're mostly interested in the binomial distribution in the limit that the number of trials n is large, so that the binomial approximates a Poisson, or Gaussian distribution. However, the binomial distribution is important in a wide variety of contexts. Now that we've seen the conditions under which the binomial distribution arises, let's see some examples. Example 1. Let's say you play the lottery every week. One out of every seven tickets wins a small prize. Over a year, what is the probability that you would win the small prize three times, eight times, fifteen times? Never. The number of wins in a year would be described by a binomial distribution with p equal 1 7th, the odds of winning, and n equals 52, the number of weeks in a year. To get the probabilities for 3, 8, 15, or 0 wins, we would set m equal to 3, 8, 15, or 0, respectively. So here's the binomial distribution for p equals 1 7th, so that's the probability of a single ticket winning the small prize, and n equals 52, the number of weeks in a year. The results for different values of m, up to m equals 20, are plotted here on the right. The typical number of wins is about 7, which is approximately 52 times 1 7th, and we can see that the probability to win seven times is just shy of 16 percent. Example 2. Let's hypothesize that one in 12 cars is red. If you go to a parking lot and look at 100 cars, what is the probability that five of them are red? Or that 10 of them are red? Or that 20 of them are red? The number of cars that are red would be described by a binomial distribution with p equals 1 12th, so that's the probability that any given car is red, and n equals 100, the number of cars that you look at. It's important to note that while cars come in many colors, we can define outcome 1 as red and outcome 2 as not red. 
So here we show the binomial distribution for p equals 1 12th, n equals 100, plotted for m up to 23. It peaks at m equals 8, which is about 100 times 1 12th, or 8 and a third. We can see that the probability for there to be 8 red cars in the parking lot is just over 14%. Okay, example 3. If 10% of people are left-handed, what is the probability that, out of a given classroom of 15 people, four of them will be left-handed? This would be answered by taking a binomial distribution for p equals 0 0.1, n equals 15, and evaluating it for m equals 4. And if we do that, we get about 4.3%. Note that this won't work if, for example, there are people in the classroom who are close relatives of each other. Since handedness has a genetic component, the handedness of close relatives would be correlated, and that would violate the assumptions of a binomial distribution. Okay, example four. Let's say you're in charge of sending a set of space probes to an alien planet. You estimate that the probes each have a 30% chance of surviving long enough to have a successful mission. You need at least two of the probes to survive to achieve your mission goals. Assuming that failures of different probes are uncorrelated, what is the chance that the mission can be completed if you send 10 probes? We can solve this using the binomial distribution for p equals 0 0.3 and n equals 10. We can take the probabilities for m probes to survive, given that the probability for a single probe to survive is 0 0.3 and that there are 10 probes, and add up those probabilities from m equals 2 to m equals 10, as is shown here. More simply, we can take the probability of success to be 1 minus the probability of failure, where failure is defined as 0 or 1 probes surviving. So this is equal to 1 minus the probability that 0 probes survive plus the probability that 1 probe survives. So here we show the probability of 0 probes surviving, that's about 2.8%, and the probability of 1 probe surviving, that's about 12.1%. So the probability of failure is about 2.8% plus 12.1% or 14.9%. This means that the probability of success is about 85.1%. There are also cases where a binomial distribution is correct, but we use the Poisson or Gaussian distributions instead because they're easier to deal with for very large values of n. For example, let's say there's a disease that randomly strikes 1 in 10,000 people, and we want to know the probability that there are m cases of the disease in a town of 25,000 people. So here, calculating the probability using the binomial distribution would be correct, but a bit of a pain. In this situation, the average expected number of cases in the town would be 25,000 divided by 10,000, which equals 2.5. A Poisson distribution with the parameter lambda set to 2.5 would be an excellent approximation and easier to use. On the other hand, in a city with a population of 2.5 million, the expected number of people with the disease would be larger, 250. A Gaussian distribution might be a better choice in this case. So, let's summarize. Here, we've talked about the binomial distribution and why it's important. The binomial distribution arises in situations where we have a number n of identical independent trials, each of which has two possible outcomes, one with probability p and one with probability 1 minus p. On this channel, we'll mostly be interested in using the binomial distribution to better understand the Poisson and Gaussian distributions, but it is also useful more generally. Here we've given just a few examples of the binomial distribution from everyday life. 
but we hope we've convinced you that the binomial distribution arises in a wide variety of contexts.